My name is Frank Hannaway, and I'm a control freak. <laughs> Welcome to Big Journey, Small Steps, where I'm going to get real with you today. Um, I come from a long line of control freaks, both my mother's side of the family and my father's side of the family, and it was particularly noticeable in the ladies in my matriarchal family and I adopted their ways. And um, over the past five years, I've been able to see that in myself even more clearly because I see it so well in my mother. Isn't, isn't it true that your parents and the people you love and your friends are a mirror for you if you look into it if you don't just think oh they're like that when you really think about it the reason those people are in your life generally is that they reflect some qualities that you have when my father died and i didn't know that my mother was already in the middle of alzheimer's we didn't know that then i knew Things weren't right. I knew she made bad choices and so forth, but I didn't know. So she announced to me one day that now that my father was gone, she could do whatever she wanted. Well, the truth of the matter is, and I thought that at the time, she always did whatever she wanted, and she knew how to spin it with my dad to make it work out, and um, she was persistent. So things tended to go her way the best as best she could make that happen. One of the ways it didn't go her way was with my brother, for example, and she, when she was still clear, she still told the story about how when they were waiting for a diagnosis for my brother, who was Down syndrome, but before they knew, um, she made a deal with God um, something that she'd do something if he would, if he would see to it that Arthur was not down. So, of course, that didn't work out. And she laughed about it later. But there, there's always been that kind of thing with my mom where, you know, she's going to bargain with the universe. Um, and in all honesty, what we came to realize that Arthur's condition was a blessing to us hopefully to him and to many, many, many people. He just spread joy everywhere he went. So, um, I've been, so after my father died, she said, now I can do anything I want to do, which she always did anyway. And I thought it was really startling. I was just like, oh, really? So, you know, but the trouble was that her, um, judgment was already impaired and so then she had me to contend with because there were a lot of things came up people tried to scam her and different things and they knew what to say to her and you know so I had to kind of come on board and I guess I actually became the one that had to say no this this isn't going to happen and this isn't going to happen well, there are a few places every day, my mother, I think I've said this before, every day almost, my mother offers me chewing gum. I'm not able to choose chewing gum. It has hurt me since I was a kid. I chew chewing gum for about three minutes and my jaw hurts and I don't see why you would chew gum. So it's okay with me. That's not, it's not just a preference. It's something that Happens to me. She does that every day. She wants to fix my lunch. She won't eat what I'm having, but she wants me to eat what she's having. So I see this in my mother, and I know I'm the same way in, in ways that have not all been clearly revealed to me yet. So there's a couple things. So I said about the gum. Also, I take her to church every Sunday and drop her off, put her with her friends because my mother is a Methodist. I'm baptized a Catholic, but I don't practice anymore. I probably practice more than I did when I was a Catholic in a way, but I don't go to Mass. But my mother wants me to go with her to church. And it's very difficult because it's one of the few hours in the whole week that I have an hour 
that I can go run some errands without having to hire the sitter or anything else. That and when she goes to Bible study are precious times for me because I can get I can actually work on things in the house if I need to without my mother being over my shoulder, which isn't always pleasant. <laughs> So anyway, she nags me about this constantly and I've told her over and over and I, she really doesn't care because if I ask her, do you remember that I don't want to go? Um, but I know you'll like it, she would say. And I say, well, I know I won't like it. And honestly, it's a little bit on the fundamentalist side for me. And sometimes things are said that make it really difficult for me because I'm very much a universalist when it comes to religion and I've made it my life's work to see the connection. So in December, this control freak gave in to the other control freak and I went to church with her twice thinking that would placate her. But since then, she has turned up the volume. And I need to not go. I also need for it not to trigger me into I'm a little boy and mommy said you should do something and you don't want to do it. I also need to be find some way to respond to her that's a little more, it's not that I'm unkind to her, but I just need to quit talking about why I don't want to go and just say I'm not going. And um, there are a couple things like that. And I thoroughly believe in um, Tagi Tagi Tagi, which means <laughs> renunciation. One of the great saints of India said um, that if you, you know, the great scripture, one of the great scriptures in Hinduism is the Bhagavad Gita. And he said, if you say, Gita, 10 times in a row, Gita, 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 it turns into Tagi, 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 which means renunciation, which was his point, his way of saying that that's what the Gita is about, is divorcing yourself from the results of your action, doing your job full-heartedly, but not expecting a result. So if I do what I think I should do, then it doesn't matter what anybody else says or anybody else does. I'm working to come to that place. But in the meantime, I find it very uncomfortable to be controlling and I catch myself and I myself and myself and um, I have the same thing with my dog. I, I I find that I overtrain her sometimes and I need to let her be a dog sometimes and set that up for her. Anyway, I don't know. I hope this was entertaining, informative, whatever. This is just what I had for this week and I think I'm going to be okay with that with this channel. Um, I'm in the final editing for Sissy Soup and the episodes will start coming out pretty soon. I may change this channel to once every two weeks just simply because I, I don't know what I can say. <laughs> I, I think things pop up in my mind and I really want to talk about it. Like I wanted to talk about this today, but sometimes I feel like I'm straining and I don't want to do that just to put content on the internet. This uh, channel is not monetized. There's, there's, I, I, I can't make money off of it. I don't want to make money off of it. Um, so none of that's really important. What's important is my keeping an open line of communication with people out there and sort of telling you what's going on with me. Anyway, I'm going to quit now. Quit, quit, quit. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with me today. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I love to say this, I wish you peace and joy.